Is Apple trolling John Prosser? I'm KB Davey and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple leaks, news and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, capacitively touch like on this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. And first up on today's show, we will get to the John Prosser thing, don't you worry. But macOS Monterey includes Apple Silicon exclusive features and... This is what I thought, and I said this last November, I think it was a, around last November, when people were asking me how long Intel Macs would be supported. What did I tell you? I said, Apple will support them probably for maybe five years, but you're not going to get all the cool features. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, this isn't the first time, because if you look back at last year, what happened? We had the first Apple Silicon Macs arrive, and what did they do? They supported iPad and iPhone apps natively that you could run them on the system. Now, I understand you can't run all of them, so Call of Duty, things like that. People don't want you to run them. If the developers don't want you to, then Apple won't let you. But the system is capable of it because everything is written in basically the same languages. It all runs on the same type of processor. There's no issues with uh, cross compatibility in terms of running it. However, this year, things are getting a bit more serious. We have a list of new features from macOS Monterey that are not included if you have an Intel Mac. So it's things like portrait mode backgrounds for FaceTime. Uh, so that nice blurry background that Apple is showing off. Uh, live text, the copy and paste, translate and look up from images. The 3D globe version of Apple Maps. Text to speech in uh, some new languages that are being added. So, uh, the on device dictation and unlimited length dictation. Those are also exclusive to the Apple Silicon version. And much of this, according to Rene Ritchie, is due to the lack of a neural engine in the Intel Macs. Uh, although there are some Apple Silicon uh, kind of derived chips in there, things like the T2 chip is based on the A10, but the A10 is before we had neural engines going into these. So as these features uh, very much lean on those, especially for the image processing and all that kind of thing, that is why these features are going to be exclusive to Apple Silicon. So, so the new Intel version of the Mac Pro, which we are hearing, is probably going to be coming fairly soon with those Ice Lake Xeon chips. It might cost you 50 grand if you want to spec it all the way out and have you one and a half terabytes of RAM, but it ain't going to be able to do a blurry background on your FaceTime videos. You know, it's it's not going to be able to it's not going to be able to do some of the cool features that macOS Monterey brings because it doesn't have Apple Silicon inside. I think this just gives us a real kind of glimpse into what will be happening in future. I think more and more of the features are going to be what only what is supported by the hardware that Apple is putting in there. They're putting it in there for a reason because it allows them to do new stuff that they couldn't do with Intel before. And unfortunately, that means that the Intel uh, Intel based Macs that already exist physically can't run it. Sorry, guys. And moving on to our next story, Max Balza on Twitter spotted M1X and M1X MacBook Pro as tags in Apple's WWDC stream video on YouTube. It seems very much like Apple was intending at some point in uh, releasing the M1X MacBook Pros at WWDC, or they have just been watching the rumors that have been flying around online and thought... People are going to be searching for this, so let's uh, let's direct them to our video. Uh, it does feel a little bit mean. John Prosser, I, I have to come out and defend John here, because John is a good guy from what I know. Like I've only spoken to him a few times, but he tries to get things right. He doesn't. He's not lying to anyone about this stuff. He is putting out the most accurate information that he has at any given time. He just, like... Pretty much all of the other leakers, anyway, the legitimate ones, don't want to get stuff wrong. So they're not putting stuff out there just to get attention, especially once they're onto Apple Track. They want to be accurate. They want to have the right information and get that rating up by being right about stuff, which is why they don't just throw stuff out there when they get one person tell it to them. They verify it with other people. The way that the leaking stuff happens behind the scenes, like, I think the middle of last year, I was getting a bit kind of bored because there were so many people just appearing on Twitter that were just making stuff up and calling themselves Apple Leaker, uh, and, and it wasn't the case. However, we know that John has, uh, or has at least had, very good sources within Apple, 
Whether things have changed, whether some of those have been sniffed out, we don't know. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes in those cases. But if you're one of the people that is going onto Twitter and giving him a hard time because he got some stuff wrong, like, do you want to know about stuff before it comes out? Because if you don't want to know, that's cool. But uh, you you might want to pick a different channel. If you do want to know about it, probably don't pick on the guy that's giving us a lot of the information because he might stop doing it. Anyway, th- it seems as well that we have the reason that the MacBook Pros have been delayed, which is many LEDs, which is what I assumed, I think, on Tuesday morning when we did our video. Uh, my assumption was that it would be the mini LED displays that were trying to catch up with what was going on from the iPad Pros uh, that had the mini LED, which are still out of stock right now. Apparently, the yields have been lower than expected, and that is what has slowed things down. Now, it says in the report, which has come out to us from DigiTimes, mm, not the most reliable, but not too bad, that uh, they've been pushed to the third quarter, which is basically what starts at the end of June. Um, and beginning of July, so basically when we expected them anyway. So we could be seeing them fairly soon. It could be back end of July, which is what we were thinking with the July 20th event date that's bouncing around there. So fingers crossed that that comes true and we get our uh, MacBooks pretty soon. So at least now we can get back to speculating. So what colour do you think the new MacBook Pros will be? As usual, I've worked with Apple Tomorrow on Twitter, who has put us together some great renders of what these MacBook Pros could look like in the new colours. We've been hearing about we've been hearing about iPhones coming in this copper colour that's been described as kind of rusty water um, as the kind of inspiration. What a beautiful uh, notion! But we don't know as well what materials are going to be used. There's a possibility of titanium. We were talking about that. Uh, a little bit, I think, towards the end of last year, maybe January this year, um, because there are some patents that have come through from Apple for impregnating titanium with different dyes. It might be that that is more towards uh, being used for Apple Watch, because they've used uh, titanium there already. We have had titanium power books in the past, pre-Intel max so it could be that they go down the titanium route it could be that they go down stainless steel but let me know what you think of these colors apple tomorrow is already working on more of these renders so let me know what colors you think are going to look awesome matte black is just going to be a bit of a dream isn't it and into iCave answers eva h asks app iCave answers do you see apple pencil support coming to the pro max iphone line what can i say i'm a sucker for consumer choice and yeah actually I think it would be nice for it to come to it. I don't think it's a particularly useful feature on the iPhones. However, being able to scribble down some notes, if Apple is going to let us scribble on our watch with our finger to send a text one letter at a time, I mean, why not let us use an Apple Pencil on one of the bigger iPhones? Now, I don't see it just coming to the Pro Max. I don't think that's the kind of feature that they would add to just one. However, it might go to just the Pro and the Pro Max as just a way of eliminating the Mini from the mix and and kind of adding an extra Pro feature. Um, What I don't think you'll be able to do is just have an Apple Pencil for your iPhone. I think it would need to be for an iPad on the same iCloud account. So you kind of pair it to that and charge it on that, but you can use it to make notes on your iPhone as well. That would make the most sense to me. Whether it's the truth or not, we don't know. Uh, This is pure speculation at this point. Uh, But it might also be something that uh, only comes out once we get an iPad mini refresh and maybe an Apple Pencil that's a little bit shorter to match. Next up, Jin McKins Boylan asks, asks, iCave answers. Hi Dave, what are the chances of an and finally announcement at the end of play on Friday? Jim, I'm assuming by an and finally announcement, I'm assuming you mean a one more thing, which... I'll be honest, I'm going to put your chances of seeing that at about 1%. Uh, the only reason I'm doing the generous uh, the generous one uh, is purely because we don't know. It, it could happen, uh, but it would be the first time that they've done anything like that. Uh, the end of the week doesn't make that much sense because all of the eyes are at the front of the week, and I don't know why they would bother kind of holding it till then. However, there was an Apple uh, press briefing, apparently, after the WWDC which was related to MacBooks, so maybe the press are ready for this, maybe there is something going to happen, but we don't have any details on it. It must have been under quite a strong embargo, uh, because no details have uh, leaked out about it, apart from John Prosser saying, according to his sources, that event still did happen. If it did, maybe they said end of the week, get excited. 
And Eva H asks, in a two-parter, Number one, do you expect to see FaceTime and Messages iMessage end up on Windows and Android next year in light of what Apple announced at WWDC? I know 12 months into the future, but I'm just interested in your thoughts. We'll address this one and then we'll come back to the second part. I don't see them bringing it to Windows or Android. It might be something where you can do it through a browser where you can kind of set up a meeting in a browser, send it to your calendar, send it to the other people's calendars, and, uh, and have it more like a Google Hangouts kind of thing. I don't see a specific app coming to Windows or Android. I think they're going to try and keep that exclusive for uh, Apple devices. So, that's my thoughts on that. I don't think Messages is coming at all, apart from maybe on iCloud.com. And part two. Do you think we might get some form of an announcement at the June 24th Windows event in relation to Windows 10 ARM for those of us who are Bootcamp VM users now i didn't think this was something that would happen however i don't think we're going to be dual booting i think apple might come out with their own version of a vm type of piece of software to run windows in on the apple silicon max however what came to mind was maybe the ipad pros with 16 gigabytes of ram maybe they are more intended to be able to also run this vm so you can have windows in a convertible style where you can use it with the uh with the keyboard and mouse or you can use it separately and run windows on your ipad as the touch kind of two in one style that might be a thing that they would do i would be very surprised if they do but i'm uh, i'm not going to rule it out in terms of 64-bit support that does exist i believe on windows 10 for ARM already where you can do x86 translation within it but I'm not a huge Windows user uh, I will probably watch this event though I didn't know it was even happening until you asked this question so that's it for this show don't forget you can still get the t-shirt or any of the other merch using this logo until the end of the week and the end of the week is Friday uh, it is going to disappear at midnight UK time on Friday so get in there quickly get on with it because I don't want you to miss out if you want to get it it's not going to be back after that thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one